It's time to be a part of it. New York, New York, now open on Broadway. If I can make it there, i make it anywhere. Set in 1946, World War II is over, New York City is rebuilding, and dreams are big. It's inspired by the 1977 film by Martin Scorsese and the iconic music of Candor and Ebb and new lyrics from Lin-Manuel Miranda. Let's send it out to Paul Wontorek. Grand Central Station is one of the most beautiful and iconic New York City landmarks. I'm here today to catch Colton Ryan as he passes through this fabled hall on his way to Broadway. His train should be pulling up any minute. Hey man. Hey man. How are you? Welcome Good to, to my you. stomping grounds, huh? This is, right? You like literally are a commuter. Yeah, yeah. You are in a big splashy new musical, New York, New York. I've actually loved this movie for a long time. Have you? Yes, I'm one of those handful of people that knows the movie really. <laughs> a vocal minority. It's very different. But I'm just so thrilled that you are in a big Broadway musical. And how are you feeling? I'll be honest, like to come back to Broadway in yeah. this fashion, I definitely didn't expect. I didn't expect to tap on uh -huh. Broadway, maybe ever. But yeah, to do it all in this big splashy way is pretty, uh, it's pretty wild. So you're actually living up in Westchester? Yes. With your fiance? Ironically enough, the minute I took a show that screams, I love this city, I <laughs> run away. <laughs> I did a little research. Okay. During rush hour, every- Hard hitting journalism, okay. Every 58 seconds, a different train pulls up. This is literally another 100 people. When you're coming through here, you probably sometimes don't even look up at the beautiful Beaux Arts architecture. No, I do actually. This has been like a, a big talking point amongst our like creative team and me, because this is a big part of the show. And I always look up now because supposedly there's this one tile that is on one of these sides. Oh, that what they didn't restore? Yes, that, that one, is like, darker. like yeah, it's totally black. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I have not yet to find it. I actually came through this before it was cleaned up. Really? Yeah, so I remember when they were all dark. <laughs> I remember when New York was, when 42nd Street was, I remember when New York was, was yeah. pretty. So tell me briefly about uh, life in Westchester with your fiance. You've been together a long time. And yes, you have, very long time. You have um, two little dogs, I think. Yeah, it's for so, babies. The one part that I'm most proud of, I don't know if you saw the playbill, but this whole thing I've dedicated to her. So oh. it's in there and because she's my New York City and uh, yuck. That's and, sweet. Yeah, no, that's it sweet. is. She's everything to me. So, and that's what this show is to me, you know? It's like, should we try to find that dirty tile? I, it's up there. Where? It's a, you found it immediately? It That's so that embarrassing. Right Where? There, on the right, just to the left of the, see that? You mean black? that little black yeah, piece that. right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That. That's that? Yeah, that's it. But what I do really want to see, forget the dirty tiles, yeah. I want to visit what's called the Whispering Gallery, which uh, plays an important part in your show. Yes. So uh, can we head over there and like uh, check it out? Lead the way. OK, cool. Jimmy and Francine. Jimmy and Francine. Have yeah. a moment. It's actually a big scene in the show. It's a big, well, big, it's a big, beautiful, big, beautiful hushed moment. new song. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. you know, this is, I only bring it up because it's wild to me. Because John, you know, Kander. Yes. Is. You know him. He knows you. I, what? I, I'm pinching myself <laughs> still, yes. But he's 96 years old. And this man presented that song to me, that Whispering Arch moment. I'll never forget. They sat me down and John sat at the piano and and Lynn stood in front of the piano and like, to me, sang this song. I, of course, I'm a puddle. I'm just like a, a total wreck. He always says a life in the theater is the luckiest life anyone could ever live. Look where we have arrived. One of us is gonna stay here. Yeah. One of us is gonna go over there. And Those are the direct lines from the show. Good for you. You can, it is? That's what I say, yeah. I'm gonna stand over here. You stand over here and I'm gonna go stand over there. <laughs> Can you hear me at all right now? Wait, yes. I can hear you. <gasps> this feels like deeply intimate, actually. Oh, that's why they wrote a whole scene about it in the show. That's true. Do you think John Kander and Lynn manuel Miranda stood in these corners and whispered? I think they went note for note, line for line in these corners. Can you hear them cheering for me now? Right up Broadway, they're cheering for me now. One day soon, all the jobs I have to do will make my dreams come true. What's the scariest thing about starring in a Broadway uh, multi-million dollar musical? It's hard for me to even think of fear at all because I'm doing all these things that truly on their own should make me very, very scared. Like playing a tuba in front of people for the first time or the piano or tapping or any of that jazz. 
It's honestly like my own little fear factor experiment where I've just thrown myself into the, the cockroach cage and just been like, okay, get over it. You gotta, you gotta fly, kid. Hey, look, we're in Central Park on Bow Bridge. Of all places. Uh, it's almost all as places. if. This is also in the show. Briefly. Yes, like it's not as much as, as it was if it's free. in the show and we plan to come here. It did, yeah. <laughs> it's a little on the nose. Well, this is actually Gorgeous. 161 years old. It is the longest bridge in all Central Park. Really? It's in a lot of movies. And musicals a, now. And musicals. Yeah. Should you spend a lot of time in, in uh, Central Park? Well, not so much anymore, but. Yeah, you're outside. Yeah. As you can tell now from my country living. This right. was my only refuge before that. Right. So yeah, I used to come here a lot, and my best friend, Mike Safala, who is a standby stand in the by. show, we bike this once a week in the summer. So there, you can see a beautiful view of uh, Bow Bridge. Now. It's gorgeous. And you know it's shaped like an archer's bow. Really? Yeah. It's not bow, it's not for taking bows. I know you've done that. You take bows every night. It's not bow bridge, it's bow bridge. This is really embarrassing, but at the beginning, I would have to go through all the things, and I was like, New York's filled with incredible places. Oh, you gotta go to bow bridge. And I could feel all of them being like, yuck, oh. My New York card was like almost revoked a couple times for that one. 44th Street, your home away from home. My home away from home, John's Pizzeria. It's not about John's Pizzeria, it's about. Oh, that. That. Oh, that, 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 that. Look at that, the St. James Theater, be a part of it. Be... That's good, they're gonna pay you for that. Doing this show is exciting, but also hearing you're doing the St. James Theater is exciting. You said when you came to New York, this was your neighborhood. You were in Dear Evan Hansen, yeah. made your Broadway debut, yeah. uh, covering the role of Evan. Um, and I mean, this this is your hood, Broadway. Well, this to me is like, in a lot of ways, like my university. Like this is my college. Yeah. I come around here and like, and I see people that I knew from a different life, or that like knew a different me essentially, but not fully formed me. And this, in every way, I'm most proud of because it's just I actually know who I am now, and and. I think that registers in the show and in the work and all that. Yeah. And so it's it's really lovely because I see all these people from the block and they're all just like, hey, how you been, man? Like, and I, my shoulders are not up here anymore. They're, they're a little closer to the earth. I love that they see that in me and I and it's such like a homecoming in a way that I, I don't think a lot of people know, but but it, that definitely feels inside for me very spiritually. Like this is this is my big declaration of like I'm home. You've learned a bunch of music instruments, musical yes. instruments to do this show. I have. Can you sort of document what you actually, because you're playing on stage, you're not you're not faking it. No, the only one that I actually had a, a real proficiency in, weirdly enough, is the tuba of all things. Wow. Um, back in Kentucky, from the sixth to the eighth grade, I was first chair all county, three years running as the tuba player. I mean, the main thing, of course, is the piano, because he's a jazz pianist, yeah. and I wanted that to be very clear but I practically failed keyboard in college. So um, that took a, that was about six to seven months of like, wow, like nose to the grindstone, like training. Now I'm doing it for a discerning crowd of 1700 people every day, so. New York, New York. Are you gonna walk me in? Yeah, I'm gonna walk you in. You have a okay. show to do. So uh, let's head in. Okay. Da, 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 Hey, start spreading the news. Thank you. I'm right. literally leaving you today. Okay, ciao. Thank you so much.